How do you respond to what God does in your life? Now, there's good things that God does in your life, and perhaps you respond well to that. But what about bad times? What about tough things, really tough things? How do we respond to those? Do we attribute to God that he is still in control? Do we grow mad with God? Do we kind of get this idea that he's somehow out of control, that he wishes us best, but um, he really can't do anything? How do we truly treat what God is doing in our lives? We're going to be face to face with what Joseph has to deal with here. He has been treated horribly by his brothers, and now he's in the position of power to mete out judgment for good or for ill. We're going to see how he responds to them and see if we can learn some things along the way. Before we dive in, uh, let's first have a time of prayer uh, to ask God's guidance as we go through this passage. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would that you would lead us this morning, that we would see what you want us to see, that we would hear your voice, that, uh, that we would become more like Christ. Lord, um, open our eyes to the things that you have to teach us. We pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right, we're in Genesis chapter 45. And I'm so glad to have all you guys along for the ride here today. It's a powerful passage. So Joseph has tested them. And Judah has said, take me instead of Benjamin. And uh, at this point, as it says in verse 1, Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all of his uh, attendants. So he called out, send everyone away from me. No one was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers, but he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and also Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Understandably so. They thought he was dead. They, they were sure that he, that he had died by then in slavery. And they repeated the lie so many times that, I mean, maybe they believed. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come near me. And they came near. I am Joseph, your brother, he said, the one you sold into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. Well, there's a different perspective on things, isn't it? I think most of us would be pointing our finger at them and say, look look what you have done. Remember what you have done. Have you already forgotten what you've done to me? But Joseph says, God sent me. God put me in Potiphar's house. God put me in prison. God has placed me here and now. That takes that takes many a night of struggles, doesn't it? To accept the evil that comes from God's hand as well as the good. I mean, who doesn't want to get signed up for the good that comes from God's hands? Uh, we want we want the material blessings. We want all the good things of life, right? We want the prosperity. But when God also gives us the tough things, how do we handle that? Do we say that he has sent me here? And then also to see the purpose in it. Now, sometimes... W- Oftentimes, let's say oftentimes, we don't know the purpose for a very long time, especially with the tough things. Rarely do we go through the hard times knowing what the purpose is. Much of the hard times is the not knowing why. I mean, isn't that the question we ask when we go through hard times? Why? Like, is there a purpose to this, God? Is there a reason for this pain that I'm experiencing? 
If so, that will give me some hope. That will give me some, some, some reason to hold on to. But yet God doesn't give us that reason oftentimes. Rather, he gives us himself. So he sees not only God's hand in him being moved down to Egypt, but he also sees God's purpose at moving him into Egypt. God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. How else could he have gotten onto the throne of uh, of Egypt? Could he have come as a tourist and, uh, you know, taken his many uh, colored coat and gotten, you know, some people impressed by it? Now, nah, the Egyptians despise Hebrews. You saw that just in the last chapter. Like, they wouldn't even eat with them because they're despicable, dirty, unclean. I know some people are like, well, racism started in the 1600s. No, no, friends. It started a long time ago. It started at least in Egypt back here. Racism has been going on since forever. Ever since there were two groups of people, one group or both groups looked down upon each other. So not only is the purpose to preserve life in general, but, um, but to preserve the family. God sent me ahead of you, verse 7. I'm oh, sorry, let's start verse 6. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be five more years without plowing or harvesting. God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. You know, he's, he's been pres preserving Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler over all the land of Egypt. You can, you can imagine how they might be just a little bit terrified now. Even though he's saying good things, how could he possibly forget? How could he possibly forgive what they had done? Return quickly to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me without delay. You can settle in the land of Goshen and be near me, you and your children and your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and all you have. There I will sustain you, for there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise, you, your household, and everything you have will become destitute. Look, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin can see that I am the one speaking to you. Tell my father about all my glory in Egypt and about all you have seen, and bring my father here quickly. Then Joseph threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin wept on his shoulder. Joseph kissed each of his brothers as, as he wept, and afterwards his brothers talked with him. So in hard times, we, we can look at them several different ways, right? We can look at all that we have lost or all that's wrong in our lives, or we can look at the remaining things that are good. And we've all seen this in people, haven't we? We've all wrestled with this. Someone can come into your life when you're grumbling, mur murmuring, and uh, you're focusing in on the, the tough things, the things that are driving you crazy or the things that are driving you to despair. We quickly gloss over the things that are good, the things that haven't gone wrong. The blessings in our lives are quickly forgotten. As we enter into this Thanksgiving season, we're reminded once again to count our blessings, to give thanks to the Lord who gave them to us. Joseph saw his brothers, and he did not look at the years that he had lost. He did not remember the times that he had suffered, but rather he was focusing in on the fact that his brothers were there. With this great famine across the whole land, perhaps before they came, Joseph wondered 
what had become of Jacob and his sons. Where was Benjamin? How was he faring? Had his brothers turned on him as well as they had turned on Joseph? I'm sure Joseph had worried for many years over what had become of them. And then with the famine, I'm sure that even was multiplied. So when they came, he was thankful. He was grateful. And when he saw that Judah had gone from wishing evil to his brothers to being willing to lay down his life for his brother, Joseph saw this as a blessing as as well. How will we view the challenges that come to our lives? That is the question that we must each answer. When the news reached Pharaoh's palace, Joseph's brothers have come. Pharaoh and his servants were pleased. They're sure happy to have Joseph right now, two years into the famine, and yet they, out of all the world, are the only ones with food, or at least the region. Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers, do this, load your animals and go on back to the land of Canaan. Get your father and your families and come back to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you can eat from the richness of the land. You are also commanded to tell them, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your dependents and your wives and bring your father here. Do not be concerned about your belongings for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did this. Joseph gave them wagons as Pharaoh had commanded and gave and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave each of those the brothers changes of clothes, but he gave Benjamin 300 pieces of silver and five changes of clothes. He sent his father the following, 10 donkeys carrying the best products of Egypt and 10 female donkeys carrying grain, food, provisions for his father on the journey. So Joseph sent his brothers uh, on this way. As they were leaving, he said to them, don't argue on the way. (laughs) Don't argue on the way. Uh, He is still their brother, isn't he? He knows what's in them. But you see this generosity, don't you? He could still be begrudging to them. Sure, he doted on his uh, his full brother more than what he was giving his stepbrothers, his, his half-brothers. But we see that he is generous to all of them. And that speaks volumes about Joseph. Was he a man of faith? Or was he a man of doubt? We see clearly he was a man of faith, right? By faith, he accepted what God had said about the famine to come. By faith, he accepted what God did in his life. And because of it, we see that he was a man of great faith. Joseph is a little bit unusual in that we don't actually ever see him doing anything wrong. It's like every step of the way he's doing right. I mean, it was probably not a good idea to share his dreams with his brothers back in the day, but that wasn't really a sin or, a, you know, it was maybe stupid, but it wasn't necessarily uh, wrong headed. I mean, so, some could read it that way, but of all the new, all the characters in the, in the Bible, very few of them, don't have anything bad said about them. Usually they have something that's pretty glaring about them. And so we see Joseph is held up as a, as a great example of faith, forgiveness. He trusted God. He trusted what God was doing. He felt himself gripped by God in the, in the sea of history for the world to be shaped. I don't think he had any clue what God was doing, but just that God gave him the faith to believe that God had a plan. 
a purpose, a meaning to it all. And so should we. God wants to do something through you that is greater than you can imagine. Oh, well, will I get lots of money? Will I get lots of power? I'm not saying that. <laughs> you may be poorer tomorrow than you are today. Next year than today. And 10 years from now than today. Life might get really, really rough for you. In fact, if the Lord tarries, each of us will um, will have hard days ahead as our health, our health declines. I mean... Apart from Jesus coming back and taking us home to be with him, uh, there's only one other way that we go home to be with Jesus, isn't there? And it is a tough road. I know we don't like thinking about that, but, but that's the truth. We are headed towards that, and on the far side of death is victory. Is victory with Jesus. We will never be separated from the Lord again. Our faith shall be sight. And that is glorious. The uh, process, the doorway to get there, not pretty, not good. It's horrible, actually. But how will we accept those turns of events? The conversations with doctors, the dark nights. How will we handle that? Will we trust the Lord? through it, or will we not? So they went up from Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They said, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned, for he did not believe them. But when they told Jacob all that Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to transport him, the spirit of their father, Jacob, revived. Then Israel said, Enough! My son, Joseph, is still alive. I will go to see him before I die. They were worried that he was going to die just any day now kind of thing, right? That uh, that Benjamin not coming back, oh, that would that would off him, you know? But now he is now full of life. What he had lost was hope, and now he had hope back again. Joseph didn't lose hope that we, that we see recorded. He was revived by God again and again. The promises of God to Abraham... Isaac and Jacob were being fulfilled in Joseph. But there is a dark turn here, isn't there? They're going down to Egypt, and if you know your Bible, you know what will happen in Egypt. For 400 years, they will be enslaved as a people before God delivers them out. Just as Joseph was enslaved before he was delivered to lead the world, so Israel, as a nation, would be enslaved before it was led out to be an example and to lead the world. We see a lot of parallels there. But what do we take from it? God was surely at work, even in the dark times. And when people do evil to us, we need to accept that the Lord allowed that to happen. That that is something we should accept from the hand of God as well. I'm not saying don't seek justice. I'm not saying uh, allow those things if you have the ability to see them stopped. But as they happen, let us not complain. I know it's easy to complain. Uh, I talk to people all the time and... Uh, I ask them how they're doing, and they say, I can't complain. And I keep saying to them, well, I could teach you if you want. <laughs> I could teach you. Because I, I, I murmur in my, in my heart mar much more than I ought to. I shouldn't at all. God has richly blessed me with my family, you know, church family, and uh, just so many blessings upon me 
what do I really have to complain about? I don't. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before you go about your day. Lord God, I pray that you bless each and every one of us. I don't ask you to bless us with freedom or riches or perfect health. We'll accept those, Lord, if you give them to us. But Lord, I ask you to bless us with faith in the trials, with hope when there's darkness. Lord, that we would sense your presence so very near to us that we would flee to you when the dark times come, that we would find purpose and hope, and that we would even find joy in the dark trials of this life. Lord, I pray that you would astonish the people around us by what you are doing through us and in us. Lord, that you would change the world and give us a great testimony to what you have done in our lives. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining with us. And uh, as always, if you have some additional comments or thoughts from this passage, do please put those down in the comments down below. Have a great blessed day. And uh, as you ramp up for Thanksgiving, uh, keep in mind uh, the Lord. This week, we will continue to have our Bible studies through Friday like normal. God bless you all. I'll see you later.